Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kurei Isagami, your resident tinkerer and metarotter, and this is the Metarot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now this week, in a rather surprising turn of events, we actually got a little bit of a teaser, actually the day before today, honestly, which is kind of rare for them to tease something ahead of time. But this week we are seeing a second rerun of a previous collaboration, once again for another two week period, much as it was with the uh, Ghost in the Shell collaboration season two. But this time we are seeing the return of the infamous Omega Sisters, the, v the, tw the twin VTuber models, very well known on the Japanese front for their content and their rather chaotic personalities. This week, however, they are going to be showcasing some new threads, um, in addition to the new skin that we, that we have given for the two existing bots, um, just to kind of celebrate their success up to this point and ongoing, and just to say is thank you once again for their for their continued support to the Metarot series, and occasionally streaming it on their channel every here and there. But we do. But that being said, we actually do have a lot of rather ex interesting and exciting announcements. Not just with the collaboration, but also with a lot of other details in general just around the channel as a whole. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this week's episode, Return of the Sisters. Starting up with the Gotcha Banners of the Week, naturally we are seeing the return of OMG Zero Omega Tail with a kit of Scope, Double Beam, Float Legs, and the Carrier Leg Ability. And we also see a rerun of the other model of the collaboration, OMG Zero One Balashatario with a kit of Desperate, Brake Hammer, Charge Strain, Biped Legs, and the Bloodstain Leg Ability. So for those that have perhaps missed the first time of the, the, first, the event the first time around, um, this includes rookies or newcomers, this is your chance to pick, the, to pick up these two very handy models and add them to your collection, because much like it was with the Ghost in the Shell collaboration, there sadly is no telling if this event will ever come back around again, or if these bots will see reruns anytime in the future. In addition to this, last week we also finally got a teaser and a look and our first look at the Ome at the nine-tailed fox motif Ori Meadow winner. This week she officially has a name and she officially goes live, introducing here KYB Zero Kokono Elegy with the kit of Confusion, Flame, Level Drain, Multi-Legs, and the Charm Leg Ability. Now, as much as as nice as it is to see a brand new face here joining the roster, especially an Ori Meta no less on top of that. Much like it is with previous collaborations, I would definitely recommend prioritizing these uh, Omega Tail and Abala Shatario first, given that, as I said, there really is no telling if this event will be rerun again or if we will see these bots again in the future. So generally, better safe than sorry to have them in the roster as you know for now, whereas Coco no Elegy definitely does have a chance to be rerun in the future, as she is joining the permanent roster and library going forward. On top of that, we are, these actually aren't the only three bots that we are seeing go live. We are also seeing reruns of NUE Zero Beast Chimera with a kit of Canceller, Ghost Shot, Laser, Wheeled Legs, and the Haja Leg Ability. And we also see everybody's favorite kimono type, JGS Zero Hikara Mate with a kit of Trap Clear, Repair, Gatling, Float Legs, and the Mirage Leg Ability. Now, of course, as covered in the past, Hikara Mate also is indeed capable of meta change, in which she exchanges her rather uh, out from the range supportive kit for pretty much an outright offensive one, with a kit of Sacrifice, Sword, Trap Clear, changes her leg tape to Biped, and her leg ability to Dead or Alive. So definitely exchanges for the support, for the fallback healing slash support for the all around melee nuking skill that she does have, especially having Sacrifice in her kit as in meta change form a kit of, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. Now with, Chim with Beast Chimera, really I can't say enough about him, and I really don't have to say much either in regards to that, as his kit pretty much speaks for itself. Go Shot, I really need I really say more, and of course Laser, you generally can't go wrong with either for your high-end um, for your high end shooting skills that do require a Metaphor's Charge. So again, both of these bots are fantastic to go after, but I still do stand by my point that you definitely that you definitely do want to go after Omega Tail and Bala Shatario first, just so you, that just so that you have them in the library, since those two are very not are not likely to come back around again anytime soon. But the fierce battles we have going on this week, uh, rather mixed kits, kind of lower tier, I guess you could call it for lack of a better term. L starting up the bat, we have SPN Zero Float Spinner with a kit of Melee Trap. Anti-Air, Anti-C, Float Legs, and the Emergency Leg Ability. Behind her, we have DGD Zero Geo Death with a kit of Optic Guard, Double Sacrifice, Float Legs, and the Mirage Leg Ability. 
And then last but not least, everybody's favorite heavy artillery porcupine type from Metarot Navi, PCP-0 Warheadly, with a kit of Optic Guard, Double Napalm, Tank Legs, and the Heavy Arms Leg Ability. Now, honestly, I, it was honestly kind of hard to decide on a, on a uh, MVP of the week, given that the, given that the skills between these three are pretty varied and pretty widely mixed, um, so having various utility is honestly good to have. But if anything, I would honestly have to give it to Float Spinner in this case, given that she has arguably one of the best all-around balances. And even though anti-air and anti-sea aren't all that great to really raise, they are still good to have on hand in the rare instance that you will need them. Um, given, say, for instance, EX Trials or PvP or even just standard uh, story for those that are struggling, it is still worth to have and still worth to raise. And the leg ability of Emergency does honestly make her a little handy for female teams, as it does buff her mobility and make her a little faster to fire off more pot shots. Now, with the event as a whole, um, just as mentioned here, we are seeing a rerun, well, maybe more or less a rehashed rerun of the event, um, just sh kind of showcasing the new threads and the new content that the Omega Sisters themselves are debuting and releasing. They have already posted a little bit of a teaser on their own channel showing Bala Shatario's new skin, which I will be showing here very, very shortly, um, just kind of showing as a highlight and a, t and a first look at what to expect in the incoming um, collaboration with Metarot once again. But with this being said, we are able to challenge the event once again, or a first time for rookies and newcomers. And this time around, we can earn events such as a such as the skin for Bala Shatario or Omega Tail. Details were not a hundred percent clear. We can also earn a row battle voice and a BG and a row battle BGM of the sisters themselves. And we can also earn a commemorative profile banner that we can use for our name cards uh, that we share around on Twitter and Facebook and other places to showcase and tell people, hey, we were here and we collect and we participated in this event. Um, much like it was with the Ghost in the Shell collaboration, uh, the season two version anyway, this event will last two weeks. So instead of having one month long, I suspect that it probably was the play in the long run to have two reruns of collaborations just kind of tie in the, the content for the month of June. I can't say that for sure, um, a lot of people are kind of wary, very, rather suspicious, and somewhat upset to a point that they are choosing to rerun so many collaborations so quickly without giving people a chance to actually collect the bots or properly participate. But, that being said, we do actually have a couple other updates on that, which may serve as some good news in, you know, as, in silver lining in the long run. Now for the skin that was showcased and released for Bala Shatario, as you see here, it is showcasing more um, one of the sisters' new threads and their new designs, uh, exchanging more or less the red shirt with white apron for a white shirt with red skirt. Um, definitely liking the new design for this one as well in particular. Um, the new, the older design definitely was very nice and very charming, but if I had to say, if I had to pick between the two, I probably would end up picking the new skin a little better. Um, it is unclear at this point if it is going to be a event reward or a paid skin, uh, one way or the other. We will get more details naturally as this event does go live later this week. Now in terms of everything else that was updated, um, in regards to the survey that was announced, um, they did mention last week that they did take all the survey comments into consideration and say that they would postpone um, working on releasing any further bots until updates have been made. Well, we do finally have that update going live as well, and then releasing, of course, uh, e uh, uh, skins, of course, and missions for the uh, for the Omega Sisters collaboration bots and Cross Messiah as well to showcase these new changes. But some of the major changes that they did say, uh, you asked, we listened. Um, some of those major changes included that a lot of the EX trial reliance and requ and requirements for the t for the tune up parts missions. Um, those will be removed entirely, um, and if they're not removed, they will be changed so that they have to so that they have to be on on EX trials just in general. Which means you can set it on more or less any EX trial theoretically, and still get the credit for completing the mission instead of having to wait for the event to come back around and leave permanently empty missions that you can't finish without having to pay rubies for. PVP and Meta League reliant missions also have been greatly reduced, if not removed. To make it a lot easier to manage those missions and a lot easier to complete those to make those completions without having to farm it completely given that a lot of complaints players had was that the events were that was that the tune-up was very uh grind heavy and very farm heavy and kind of made it difficult to far to complete those missions as a whole and then last but not least there were some missions that were that were completely removed entirely such as for leg for legs that are that do have tune-up parts 
the dodge mission for, more, for the most part has been removed entirely, given that dodge is a very, very difficult action to actually consider or uh, to accomplish, and thus a lot harder to complete that mission in the long run. Hopefully, uh, these, hopefully a lot of these uh, notes and, f and fixes for the tune-up feature will make it a little easier to farm going forward, um, and a little easier to complete those, especially given that one of the new bots that we have, one of the new, one of the new bots that are getting them is, of course, everyone's favorite starter, Cross Messiah. Now they did also tease some heads up on what to expect of what we can redeem uh, with the tune-up parts for those particular bots. In in particular, with Cross Messiah as an example, um, if if you are able to complete the tune-up set on the head and get and redeem the points, a couple of the missions that they, a couple of the rewards that they did mention you could redeem are 20% reduction in um, HP uh, in HP consumption when using full charge. In addition to that, they did also mention in some cases that you could even use full charge twice um, as an additional bonus action once you are able to fully tune up the part for, for Cross's head. In addition, for the legs, they did also highlight that your shoot and melee resist would also get some rather serious bonuses, um, which honestly does tie into his leg ability really well. And of course, an, an extra leg, of, an extra terrain that his legs are S on, which I believe they said is Prairie this time around. Balashitario and Omega Tail also do have rewards that you can redeem as well with, with the tune-up points, but hopefully going forward with this, it will be a little easier to farm for them, and much easier to accomplish this time around than it was for the uh, Ghost in the Shell collaboration. Now, just as another reminder, they did also tease some more information of a live stream with Horomarin himself, the father of Metarot. And during this live stream or this event, he will be drawing a brand new Metarot before our very eyes. And the theme that he has chosen to go with this is the Seven Lucky Gods. Um, the, the the concept art that you see here is one of his new ex one of his new models that he has finished during the concept art of. So I can only imagine. I'm only greatly look and I'm greatly looking forward to seeing what he will draw. Um, and maybe even seeing these bots go live in Metarot S sometime soon, whether that be as um, event rewards or even as gacha banners or anything of the like. This will definitely be something exciting to look forward to, and more information on that will go live as events as the event and the time does come closer. Now, I do also want to say thank you briefly to those that did collaborate with my surveys when it came to my pre to my most recent video, um, Imagineer. We have a problem of which I kind of point out and lay out all the facts of what of what players have been complaining about and are upset over when it comes to things that Metarot S has been falling short on in the two and a half years that that the game has been ongoing. Now, don't get me wrong. I feel the game has been absolutely fantastic, and I've made it a point to give Imagineer credit where it is due. However, it is also hard to ignore all the complaints that people have had with the game, and of course, I did actually I did actually have to put all those up on the front, hopefully in the hopes that Imagineer will see this and kind of take into consideration some of the points that were mentioned as ways to as ways to appeal to the community and keep the game going strong like we as a community believe that it can. I do also want to give a highlight to my JP followers as well. Um, a, dear, a good friend of mine, Metarotter Lux on Twitter, has actually taken this entire presentation I have, uh, where I lay out all the complaints and problems, and transcribed it into Japanese as a blog post with a link to the original, using the subtitles um, that were generated for the video. Now, I do have to agree, subtitles on YouTube are honestly not the greatest, as they're more or less on the same tier as Google Lens, which generally isn't all that great either. But props to you, Metarotter Lux. Thank you so very much for doing that as a way to reach out and further my reach of the, you know for this video to the community on the native JP front. And just to tell people, hey, we Western fans are over here and we are in support of you and in support of Imagineer all the same. So thank you so much for that. If you'd like to know more on that, I will mention this as well. Definitely do give Metarotter Lux a follow and definitely do give that blog post to his read uh, for my JP viewers that are that do listen in on me and, and tune in. Now, I do also want to give one other rather surprising announcement. I was not I was not expecting this soon, and that is the fact that as of last night or so, I have officially peaked 300 subscribers. I honestly, I've said it at the 100, the 200, the 250. I honestly never thought I would make it this far. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for all the for all of the support and the encouragement that you've given me through this time. I could not have done it for without you this going this far, and I will continue to give back to the Metarock community weekly as I have with my breakdowns, with my weekly episodes, or even anything else that in between to be worked on 
um, that I would that you guys would like to see uh, for my content. In addition to this, I do I do also want to implement some kind of challenge, I guess, to reach 500 subscribers. I know it'll be a little bit of a long run, maybe just a little bit of a slog, but I know we can do it. What will I do for the 500 um, milestone? I frankly have no idea yet, but I am open to suggestions. I am still um, entertaining the idea of streaming, whether that be meta up based content or pretty much anything in general. Uh, maybe even streaming a weekly episode on here, you know, on Twitch or somewhere else. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Drawing streams, uh, open up the contest like I did for the 250 sub. I don't know yet, but maybe closer to 500, I will figure something out. It honestly depends on how um, how eager you guys are to see that accomplished and realized. So if you'd like to do me a favor and share my channel around, tell people about it, re reach out to other meta routers and say, hey, the Western community is stronger and more alive than you think it is, and send them my way. More than happy to give them a, to reach out to them and even just tell them just a little bit about what I do. So again, thank you so much for the 300 subscriber milestone you've helped me reach. I could not have done it without you. Now on the community front, we are still continually looking for translators for the MetaRot 3 and the MetaRot Reloaded translation projects. So if you are knowledgeable in coding, cleaning, or Japanese and have some time on your hands, we are more than appreciative of any efforts that you'd be willing to provide. And if you do have any questions on that, you can reach out to me or join our communities in the links provided below and ask around and we are more than happy to get you up to speed with everything that has been done and everything that needs to be done thus far. Translation on the MetaRot 3 uh, code has been going well. Uh, more, more progress has been made on translating the lines and the text. But of course, the more translators we have, the better and the sooner we can finish it. So again, you're welcome to reach out to me or join our communities and we can definitely get you in touch with the right people to tell you what needs done. For the weekly art highlights, these are actually a couple I found very, fairly recently and all around my boy Manjuro, so I'm going to give him some love today. Um, this fantastic art piece by Twitter user Hakubes, um, of a, translated as Soft Manjuro. I actually have this as my, as my phone wallpaper right now. It is absolutely adorable and I love everything about this. Um, I will provide a link to that tweet below if you guys are interested on that, so you can follow, so you can follow them as well and, fo and see more of their fantastic art. And also give uh, Bay Daisuke a follow as well for his paper crafts. I have highlighted them in the past. This time around, however, uh, by by request actually, and I'm, I was surprised. He's actually working on Manjuro from MetaRot 9. Um, the initial uh, printing has been finished up to this point based on what I last saw. I am very, very excited to see the final result and print it myself. And if I did see their Twitter correctly, I, they are actually also working on making Grain, the Arch Devil type, as, an, as another paper craft to complete. So looking forward to seeing more progress on that as well. But aside from all this, I believe that covers just about everything for this week's episode, so thanks so much for stopping by, folks. If you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the MetaRot News Network page, or the MetaBots Forever communities on there. You can also reach out to me on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below. This is a link to the Project Rising Beetle official Discord, our international community. We have folks from pretty much all walks of life and all nationalities here, but all of us with one particular common interest, and that is MetaRot. So if you'd like to know more or even keep up to date with any new information or releases or even any teasers, that is the first place you will hear it before anywhere else. You can also reach out to me personally on Twitter at Isagami Kura. So if you have any questions, feedback, or comments, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. My DMs are always open, so don't be a stranger and feel free to stop in and say hello. And of course, do give these fine people a follow as well. They're good friends of mine, uh, MetaRotter Lux on Twitter. Um, as I mentioned, he did manage to undertake the endeavor of, of taking my entire um, breakdown video, I guess you can call it, talking about the complaints and the, tr and the issues that people have with MetaRot S and translate it into a blog post into Japanese uh, for my J for JP viewers that follow me, but perhaps just aren't versed in the English language, which is completely no issue at all. Um, language barrier is, of course, something that we have to uh, overcome, but props to you, Lux, for doing what you do. Thank you so much for doing that. In addition, do also give Bay Daisuke a follow as well on Twitter uh, for the paper crafts I did mention just a moment ago that he's working on. He does also provide download links for those, and right now I believe he has uh, Hardness 10, Deer Stage, and Marine Healer up for open downloads uh, for paper crafts, and I'm anticipating Manjuro to officially join that roster here sometime very soon once the initial tests have been finished and the files do go live. 
But aside from all this, like I said, I do believe that covers everything. So thanks again for stopping by, folks. It's always happy to have you in for a visit. Until next time, this is your host, Kura Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.